There are three reasons why you should watch Queenstown King. It's a family oriented movie that focuses on repairing a broken relationship between father and son. Reason two, it's about football. So if you love football, this is for you. This follows a small township team that tries to achieve an impossible dream of reaching or playing in the net bank cup. And it happens thanks to a prodigal son who returns home when his father passed away. An important life lesson. This film has a bunch of important life. For example, don't rush things. You know, everything has its own set of pace. Let things uh, progress or blossom in their natural process. Give second chances. There are moments where not everyone does mistakes and it doesn't seem like they deserve what you're giving them. But give second chances. And of course, drugs are bad. Ooh, those are the three main reasons I think you should watch this movie. I'm not going to add that it's fun, it's well written, interesting African story. I'm not adding those facts. Now let's get to the part where I start spoiling this movie. This film follows a washed up football player who's played for the mighty Mamelodi Soundtown and is basically near retirement age. He's 37, he's suffered an injury, he's got two busted up knees, an alcoholic at the current moment. He's beat up about his life that it's not progressing. Bear in mind this guy's a five time lead champ, just won the net bank cup, the cup they talked about in this whole movie. Anyway, his father dies while coaching a small town team in his hometown, the team that happens to have his son playing in that now he has to return home for his father's funeral ends up failing miserably because he's arrested on the way to the funeral for drinking and driving and this sort of starts the chain reaction of events that make him stay longer in the town and sort of help his son uh, achieve his dream of you know becoming a football player now he's arrested and uh, during the court hearing of his case he somehow convinces the judge that he should do community service he's a former player he's got the expertise that could be beneficial to the community and the judge somehow agrees he hands him off to a police officer who happens to be married to this guy's baby mama the guy who's been raising this guy's kid while he was away playing the best football of his life being a star now he's back in the boondoos, it's not really the boondoos, I'm just saying, back in Lake Ass, back in the township. Now this cop has to monitor him, monitors every move and stuff. And on top of that, while monitoring him, he happens to be coaching the same team that this guy is coaching. So there's already riffraff between the two. To, and this guy doesn't like this guy because this guy, you know, is a washed up father, a washed up football player, a washed up human being, and this copper guy. What's hilarious to me is he's coaching a football team like it's a rugby team. He's dressed like a rugby coach or a rugby player. He trains like a rugby player. He trains them kids like for endurance, bro. Like he does insane things. Like he's training these kids to hardcore when they have a game tomorrow and they get fatigued really fast before the game even ends. Our lead protagonist, the washed up football player, becomes a beacon of hope to his team because he's got a better insight of how to play football, how to do what what. And the team of course really takes into him, but his son really hates this guy's guts. Like, in my opinion, he hates him because this guy abandoned him as a young one. And him abandoning his son, uh, the kid hates his father, which is logical. He went away and achieved your dream. You never cared about me. Now, granted, maybe the parents agree that he's a bad influence, yada yada, he's childish, who knows. But it's quite interesting. And uh, this whole film is about trying to get this guy to bond with his son or trying to get this kid to bond with his father. And his mother tries to convince him, his grandmother tries to convince him, even his stepfather tries to convince him. Like, bond with your dad, nigga. And in the end, they actually do bond, so spoiler alert. Too late now, I already, I already ruined it for you. So it, all in all, it's a great film. Like, it's a great redemption story. A guy who's selfish, self-centered, ends up selling his own car to facilitate his son's dream. Even with the financial problems he's having, he puts 250 into facilitating his son's dream of playing in the net bank. That's amazing. And, and, and another weird aspect of this, this film, what I found very strange is, this kid is a uh, caressed or coerced by this team that he wants to play for, a team that his father, his grandfather played for. And they try to finesse him into joining by cornering him in a club, offering to sign him for a hundred thousand as a boat signing bonus. In a weird setting. I'm not saying I've been behind, I've ever seen a player being offered a game. I just found it very suspect and very creepy. Almost like this kid was selling his soul away. It was awkward. And they used a woman all in all to a woman they used her in order to caress this young man to sign and he almost was like i'm not signing and then this drug incident with one of his uh you know teammates a township 
team and he was like you know what damn it i'm going to sound down so i'm going to play koba melody and he does he does the you know the trial he does the medical he passes and he's almost about to sign decides like against last minute there i'm not going to leave my brothers behind strange but beautiful i think i've spoiled it more than enough i've spoiled it more than enough it's time for me to skip that now that was entertaining please let us hang out yet another time remember to like and subscribe adios folks adios